Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. I have to tell you guys for our lesson today, I'm really excited because the group of animals that we are learning about are not always a group that gets a lot of attention or excitement. However, these animals are super cute and colorful and fascinating and have some really incredible ways that they survive in the ocean. Today, we are going to be exploring an amazing group of sea slugs called nudibranchs. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Nudibranchs are a group of very colorful, very cute sea slugs with about 3,000 different species and they live in lots of different places. We can find them in the freezing waters of the Arctic or the Antarctic. We can find them in warm, shallow, tropical reefs. We can even find them in the very dark, very cold, deep sea. Now, sea slugs belong to a larger group of animals that we call gastropods, and gastropods include all snails and all slugs, both the ones on land and the ones in water. All gastropods belong to an even bigger group of animals that we call invertebrates. Invertebrates are animals that do not have a backbone, and that's one of the reason that nudibranchs are kind of bendy and twisty. Nudibranchs are benthic animals, and a benthic animal is any animal that lives on the sea floor. When they're not hiding in rocks or corals, we usually find them wiggling and crawling across the ocean floor pretty slowly. There are a handful of species like the beautiful Spanish dancer that can actually swim by wiggling its body and getting up into the water column. Every known species of nudibranch is a carnivore, meaning they like to eat other animals. Now, because there are about 3,000 species that all live in different places, they eat many different foods. Some nudibranchs eat sea sponges. Some nudibranchs eat soft corals, and they also eat the little algae in the soft corals. Some species eat a type of animal called a hydroid, which is like a cousin to the jellyfish, and we're gonna talk more about that in just a little bit. I mentioned right at the beginning that nudibranchs have some incredible colors. Almost every species that we know of is brightly colored. They can range in colors from blue and yellow to a bright, vibrant purple. Some species even have polka dots. Now, we're not sure exactly why they have bright colors, and it could be a different reason for different species. Some species we think are brightly colored to camouflage into sponges and corals. Their bright colors kind of blend them into that environment. Other species, we think their bright colors are more of a warning to signal to predators, hey, I'm dangerous. You do not want to eat me. For the species whose bright colors serve as a warning to predators, this is really important because nudibranchs may not always see their predators coming. In fact, nudibranchs have a very poor sense of vision. They can't see well at all, so they have to rely on their other senses in order to navigate the world and figure out what's going on around them. Most nudibranchs have these structures on their head that kind of look like antennae, and those are called rhinophores, and they're used to help a nudibranch detect chemicals, which is a very fancy way of saying they help a nudibranch smell and taste in the water around them. Rhinophores are not the only unusual structure that nudibranchs have on the top of their bodies. Just beyond their rhinophores, most nudibranchs have lots of little structures called serrata. And these serrata look like tall, thin structures on their backs. And depending on the species of nudibranch, the serrata can be used for lots of different things. Most species use their serrata to help them breathe. Now, just to be clear, serrata are not gills. 
but many species use them like gills to absorb oxygen from the water so that they can breathe. Like I said a moment ago, different nudibranchs use their serrata for different things. I want us to think back for a moment to when I was talking about what nudibranchs like to eat. I said some species like to eat an animal called a hydroid, which is like a cousin to a jellyfish. Now, just like jellyfish, hydroids also have stinging cells, but these special nudibranchs that eat them are not harmed by the stinging cells. Instead, when they eat them, they actually steal those stinging cells for themselves. They store them in the tips of their serrata so that when they are faced with a predator, they now have the stinging cells that they stole from the hydroids that they ate. Some species use their serrata for protection to store those stinging cells. Other species use their serrata to get energy. Now this is kind of weird, but let me explain. Think back to the nudibranchs that I mentioned that like to eat soft coral. I said they also eat some of the algae that is in the soft coral. Now, just like some species steal stinging cells from their food, these nudibranchs steal some of those cells from the algae and store those in their serrata, and then when those cells photosynthesize, they get energy from the sun, and then the nudibranch can use that as energy for themselves. All right, just to be clear really quick, some species of nudibranchs eat hydroids, steal their stingers to use as protection for themselves. Other nudibranchs eat soft coral and algae and steal some stuff from the algae that lets them make energy for themselves. We also said that some nudibranchs like to eat sponges, and while they don't necessarily steal anything incredible from the sponges, what they do take is a really bad taste. The species of nudibranchs that eat sponges, sponges typically don't taste very good, so then the nudibranchs don't taste very good, and that's a pretty good way to avoid predators as well. If a nudibranch is able to use one of these incredible strategies to survive to adulthood, they, like all animals, have a very important job, and that is to find a mate and to breed. Nudibranchs lay eggs that are very teeny tiny. Some species lay just a few. Other species can lay thousands, and those species usually lay their eggs all clumped together in a structure that kind of looks like a ribbon, so we call it an egg ribbon. Now, once those eggs hatch, Nudibranchs do typically have a very short lifespan. Some species don't even live past a year. So once they hatch, they've got to develop as fast as they can to become an adult nudibranch, and the whole process starts over again. All right, you guys, as we near the end of our nudibranch lesson here, I have one question for you before we go. I said at the beginning that nudibranchs don't always get as much attention or excitement as some other animals. So now my question is, do you think nudibranchs are as cool as I think nudibranchs are? I hope the answer is yes, because I told you guys some amazing facts about nudibranchs today, and if you would like to keep learning about them, be sure to click that link below where you can see quizzes, activities, projects, and so much more all about these very cute, colorful sea slugs called nudibranchs. All right, you guys, I hope we see you next time at our next adventure. Thank you very much.